Okay, I'm sorry for the over, guys. This session will be in English, but in French English. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to do my best. So, so I'm David, I'm, work, uh, I'm working at Elasticsearch for more than one year now. And um, so don't trust me, try yourself. Um, actually, this talk is based on my own experience when I was uh, working for the French customs. And today we are going to talk about how we can uh, add advanced search uh, for your legacy application. The use case we are going to cover today is about marketing data. So imagine that you are collecting data about persons. Those persons has, have um, uh, some information like the name, the birth, of the birth date, the, um, the number of children, that, uh, the, the location, and some metrics about the center of interest, such as how many times I click on the cars button in my mobile application, for example. And we already have in place a SQL-like uh, application. And we want to add now a new technology, a, a new search engine to build some cool new feature on top of uh, our application. So let's talk about what we have now. We have a web application. This web application is providing web services using HTTP REST JSON. Actually, I didn't um, choose to use all the GSP and servlet things because it's not the, the purpose of the talk today. So I'm having an AngularJS application. And my web application uh, is uh, doing SQL queries to the database today. If we look deeper, we have, uh, as usual, uh, three service, uh, three layers, sorry. Uh, one for the web services, the other one for the service layer, and the other one for the data access objects. And we have a transversal uh, domain layer, which contains our bins. About our bins, what we have, we have a person bin, which contain all the information I mentioned before. We have an address bin, which contain the, the thing about the address, so the country, the city, that is, and the location in, with a geopoint bin. And we have also our marketing data. Those are counters. The database looks really similar. We have a, a table for person with the fields, the marketing table, which is joined to the person uh, table, and the address as well. So let's start a demo of what we have now. So, okay. So I'm going to first uh, run my application from IntelliJ here. So it's starting, deploying. I'm using Tomcat. This is a simple thing. I should use Tommy. I was attending the talk just uh, before. Um, so. The thing I need to do first is to inject some data. So I have here an entry point. Uh, I can inject 10,000 uh, person here. So I have basically um, a small interface here. I can search for people here like this. So I'm searching in my database. As you can see, the injection rate is not that high. And the more document I have in my database, um, the bigger uh, the response time is. So I have also the advanced search, yes, here. So my injection is over now. I can search here, for example, for Joe in that field. In the country field, field I can search here for Italy and Istia. Seems like it's not working fine, okay. <laughs> okay, um, let's have a look at the code. If we look at what we have now uh, in the search implementation, I'm looking at the DAO layer here. If I look at the find like Google search, I simply have a query here. I'm using Hibernate and uh, Spring. I'm building a criteria and I'm asking for uh, 10 results by default, and I'm building a list using that query I just built here. So let's have a look at the query. 
the query is built like this, is built like this, sorry. I'm using like queries. So I'm searching both in person table and in address table. So I have a join here. And I'm searching using I like uh, on the name, the country, and the city. If I look at the advanced search, what I did here, I am getting from the interface the name uh, filter, the country filter, and the city filter. And I'm building some criteria based on that. So if I have a name, I'm searching in the name field, name field using a percent, uh, name percent, using a like. So that's what we have now. Uh, by the way, if you want to replay all that demo, you can clone my project and then replay. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the branch you can use uh, uh, after. I will publish the slide uh, also. So we want to connect now our application to a search engine. This search engine will be here, Elasticsearch. Let's say that we have already Elasticsearch running. And the question is how we can connect our application to Elasticsearch how we can inject data into our cluster. But the first thing we need to cover is the document design, how we need to design our documents before injecting them to Elasticsearch. The first thing we can have in mind is to say is saying that we have a table for person, we have a table for address, and we have a table for marketing. Maybe we can build one type of documents per table. So. I will have here for my person uh, information, the information uh, inside the table directly in my person document here. And I will have to do a join if I want to search for a person based in France. But actually, with Elasticsearch and with many uh, NoSQL uh, data, uh, sorry, document oriented database, uh, join is not something you should really do. A better approach for this is to build a full JSON document which represents your build, your, your bin, sorry. So here, if I want to search for a person which, uh, who is living in France, so I have indexed and I have sent to the database all the information I need for this search. So this is that kind of document we want to, to provide. In Elasticsearch, you can uh, do some re relational um, uh, stuff um, because we have the parent child future with which can with that you can build some relational uh, between documents but my advice is keep things as simple as possible start s simple and use this use this only if you really need it so this is the document we want to build how we can get our documents from the database and push them to Elasticsearch, we can use an ETL. So an ETL is an extract, transform, and load tool. What it does basically, it takes information from a database, it transforms to JSON, for example, and then push to Elasticsearch here. In Elasticsearch, you can add, oh, sorry, I forget to mention that you can use, for example, Mu USB and uh, Talent. In Elasticsearch, you can add your plugins if you want. We have plugins for language analysis, for example, for um, node discovery in a cloud environment. We have plugins for Hadoop as well, and so on. And we have also what we call the reverse plugins. What are reverse, actually? This, um, I'm going to talk about the GDBC River, which is built by York Prente. It's a very nice plugin, actually. And what does River does uh, do? The River uh, run uh, every five minutes, for example, a SQL command, then get the, the result back from the database, transform to JSON document, and push to Elasticsearch. What is exactly a River, actually? A River is an ETL running inside an Elasticsearch node, right? But what is the problem here? Actually, we are polling the database every x minutes. 
So we are far away from the real time. We are not really real time yet. And also imagine the, the, the kind of SQL command you need to launch to build a complex JSON document. It's not really easy. Imagine you have collection of collection of collection of fields. You cannot build a JSON document with a single query. And what about when you delete a document? How you can know that a document which does not exist anymore in the database, you have to delete it in Elasticsearch. You can use trigger, but it's become tricky. So my favorite way for doing that is, doing, is by doing a direct connection from your application to Elasticsearch itself. Just like what you are doing in today when you are um, dealing with a SQL database. So the idea is you have your bin in memory at some point when you persist your, your bin to the database, at the same time, just send it to Elasticsearch, right? So we are going to go through several uh, steps. Uh, and at the end, we should have <laughs> a nice uh, application running. So let's start it. I'm starting from the same uh, code we have seen before. So the first thing I need to do, I need to add Elasticsearch, right? So I'm going to add dependencies to Elasticsearch. I'm adding here a dependency to Elasticsearch itself. So I'm using the, this version. And I will use also a Spring Factory I wrote uh, two years or three years ago when I was working for the French Customs, which is open source. Uh, because it will uh, help us <laughs> after. So the first thing I want to do when I save a person in my database, I want to, sa sa to save it as well in, into Elasticsearch. So I'm going to add an Elasticsearch DAO object, and I want to save here the person. Right. I need to create that class that field first, so it will be an Elasticsearch DAO. I'm going to use Spring, so I'm going to auto-wire this class. So I'm creating the class in DAO package. Yes. And then I need to, to tell Spring that uh, this class uh, is a repository here. Um, let's create the save method. Okay. So what I need to do when I want to send documents to Elasticsearch, actually, I need to create uh, JSON documents. So for that, I'm going to use an object mapper, which is provided by the wonderful Jackson library. So let's call that a mapper. I have that in my uh, Spring definition file, so I can, sorry, auto-wire it. Oops, object mapper. So with that mapper, I can write a bin as string or as byte. That's okay. This is my person. I send the exception, and here are my bytes. So what I need to do now, I need to send those bytes, that JSON documents to Elasticsearch. So for that, I'm going to auto-wire uh, an Elasticsearch client. Its name is client here, or ES client, that's okay. So for this client, I'm going to create an index operation so an index request here with some parameters. I'm going to send my document in an index named person. The type of this document is a person. And I can set the ID here. And I will extract this information from the person itself. I have a reference number. OK. I need to add the JSON document itself. So I'm going to use a source. And I'm going to provide bytes here. Done. Two lines. What I need to do is to inject my client. 
So for that, I'm going to add some more information in bins. So I will use the spring factory I mentioned before. So here, I'm loading from the class pass some properties. Oops, here. So in those properties, I can set, for example, the cluster name for Elasticsearch, which is an important setting. By default, the cluster name is Elasticsearch. So, okay. Search. Okay. <coughs> Let's compile this. Okay, I have an exception. What is happening? Yes, I have an exception here. And actually, we can think about the exceptions. Globally exception. What will happen if my um, Elasticsearch uh, operation is successful, but then I have a problem with my database? E Elasticsearch is not a transactional tool, right? So you cannot roll back what you have done. So how you can deal with that? The first thing is I want to put Elasticsearch in the second place. Okay. What can I do now? If I have any exception with the database, that's okay. Elasticsearch is not uh, updated, but if I have an exception with Elasticsearch, I can eventually roll back the transaction uh, which is currently um, uh, op opened. But here, I don't want to lose the data my um, user sorry, has, uh, has just uh, saved. So I'm going to try catch this. And for every exception or throwable, I just want to warn my uh, admin team that we have a problem. So, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, and that's all. Before relaunching uh, the project, I need to first start Elasticsearch. So I have here an empty Elasticsearch um, uh, not running yet. I'm launching Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch will start to listening with, uh, on two ports. One will be for the GVM uh, serialization, this one, and the other one will be for the REST operations. So as we are doing Java, I'm going to use the first one here. So now I can restart my application. Yes. While this is starting, I'm going to show you a plugin we have in Elasticsearch, which, i which is our management and monitoring uh, console. So here you can see that I have uh, only one node, sorry, one node running here. And I have an internal in index which store our data, our metrics about the cluster itself. Okay, let's inject some documents again. So we should see that the documents are coming, probably. I hope so. Yes, okay, they are coming. Um, what we need to do again, we can talk about the deletion operation. So deleting a, a document is uh, easy as well. I can use the same Elasticsearch DAO and I'm going to add a new method here, which will be person. Let's create that method. What I need to do, no, I'm going to make it easier. I'm going to give the reference of the person. Yes. Okay. Oops, here. So what I need to do here, I need to use the same Elasticsearch client and I want to perform a delete request so this is a new delete request operation. Same thing as before. 
Oups. On person index uh, with the person type Oops. using uh, my reference, my person here. Right? And then that's all. So with that command, I can delete your person. Uh, my injection, I think, is done, yes. If we look at Marvel, we have here uh, a plugin. The name is Sense. And in Sense, we can run some queries, for example, into Elasticsearch. So we can see our generated documents. For example, here is one generated document here. Olga Maria, welcome. Um, but note that uh, we with the interface, we are still using uh, uh, the database here, right? So if I search for Joe, I'm still using the database. So we need now to migrate the search operation uh, itself. So for that, I'm going to look at the person service. Remember, we talk about the search method. Uh, in this search method, what I can do, I can create a, a query here a query for Elasticsearch. I'm going to use a query builder. This will be my query. And let's say that our user didn't enter anything in um, the, the, the text box. So for that case, I want to do something special, which is I want to match all documents I have. So for that, I'm going to say this my query will be query builders dot match all query. So I match every document. But if I have text, I want to match, I want, sorry, to create a query builders dot, a simple query string. I'm giving here the, the, the string I'm looking for. And I need to set in which field I want to search uh, for that text. So let's say I want to search in the name field, in the country field, in what I said, city field, and maybe the gender as well. We have that. Gender. Okay. So we have the query now. We can send the query to the Elasticsearch DAO. I'm going to create a new method search with my query. And I'm adding from and size parameter. So Elasticsearch is very well with uh, paginations. So let's create that method. OK. So I'm going to use the same client, and I'm going to use a prepare search. So I'm searching in an index. The name is person. I can say I'm looking only for types. And one type I'm looking for is the person type. And I'm going to set my query. OK. And now I can set from page, from object 0, and the page size is size, which is 10 by default. What I need to do, I need to execute that statement. And everything is asynchronous in, in Elasticsearch. So here I want to wait for the end of operation and get the result. So this is my response. And I want to return that response. OK, cool. So in person service, now I have a response here. I can use it. Yep. I can remove the whole code. And uh, I am, uh, as my interface uh, is a REST interface using JSON documents, I can simply send the response back as a string, which is the JSON document. If we look at the advanced 
um, search part, we can do exactly the same thing. And to be faster, I'm going to use a shortcut. You, I type very fast, yes. So what is happening here? Uh, I have the name, the country, and the city uh, strings, which comes from the interface. So if I have nothing in those str in strings, I'm using the match all query. But if I have something in the name field, for example, I'm building a Boolean query. And for each uh, term I have, I'm asking to Elasticsearch to find person, for example, which match this uh, field into the uh, this string, sorry, into the name field. Same for address the dot country and for city here, right? And then I send the query, and this is the same stuff. So let's restart our application. I'm sorry. Oh yes, thank you. I made that mistake. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Nice catch. So this is restarting, right? I don't have to re-index my data because I already sent everything to Elasticsearch, so my data is there. So now if I search uh, inside my database, look at, if I search for G, I can't find anybody. But if for Joe, it's working, right? If I, s I want to get uh, everything, the result is one millisecond, not, not any more one second. So if I want to search for mail, for example, that's working, right? If I want to search for France, okay, it's working. The same for advanced. If I'm searching for Joe, doesn't work, up, it works. If I'm searching for England, Yes, I have it. That's working. It's not ideal, right? We need to fix that. One of before fixing that, I want to show you something because when you index document, uh, this way, sorry, this way of doing is this um, document per document is not fast. It's really slow when you index into Elasticsearch. It's not that slow, but it's slow. So you have a better option to do that is to is by using what we call the the bulk, which is a batch mode actually. So here I'm going to create what we call a bulk processor. There we go. Okay. So I'm building this bulk processor the first time I I create an instance of uh, this class. My pro bulk processor needs a client and a, li a listener. Before executing each uh, bulk of a given number of requests, I'm uh, calling this method. After the execution, if successful, I mean if there is no exception, you, you are calling this method. And if you have any exception, you can uh, get uh, uh, the result um, here with this method. I'm setting the bulk action size, so that means that every 10,000 documents, I will flush the content of my bulk, okay? And whatever the number uh, of ac um, requests you have in the bulk, every five seconds, I will flush the bulk. That's what does it mean. So what is the difference for us? Instead of using Elasticsearch.index, I need to simply say I'm going to use the bulk processor and I'm going to add a new request, which is here an index request, and the same goes for delete request. Okay, we are done. Remember that I, uh, I said that when we search for G, we don't find something. Why this? Because Elasticsearch is building a mapping, a default mapping, based on the document you are sending. And based on that, you can not, uh, by default, uh, run autocomplete-like um, features. 
So we need to modify that mapping. And for that, we are going to use uh, what is provided by the factory. We are going to create here a new directory. By convention, it's ES for Elasticsearch. And the index name, so person. In this directory, I'm going to create a new file, which is person dot json, which represents the mapping for my type. Okay, I'm adding the mapping here. I'm not going to enter in the all details, but what I have here, I created on the fly, uh, I am going to create on the fly a full text field inside my JSON document, and this full text field will be provided here, for example, by the city field. So each time I have something in the city, I'm copy it to the full text field. Same for country. And for the full text field, I'm going to use a specific analyzer, which is the n-gram analyzer. It will produce grams uh, on top, uh, after the tokens, uh, which will be produced by Elasticsearch. And when I search, I'm using an over-analyzer, which is a simple analyzer. And I'm also creating a subfield of city. If I search in city, I'm using by default the, the default uh, index and search analyzers. But if I, if I search in city.autocomplete, I will use at index time the n-gram analyzer and at so search time the simple analyzer. So I need to create as well my n-gram analyzer. How I do that? I create here a new JSON file, which are the settings for my index, actually. Um, here I create my n-gram analyzer. This is something about Elasticsearch. I don't want to cover all the details today. So I have my analyzer here. What I need to do, I need to remove my index. And, uh, and then I'm going to restart the application. So the factory will know that uh, in Elasticsearch, we don't have the, um, the, the index created yet and the mapping created yet. So the factory will load the settings to create the index and the person.json file to, to create the mapping. So this is what is happening in logs here. Okay. So if I continue searching, oh, I need to index documents because I removed everything. So if I'm searching here, I still can't find GO. Why this? Because I didn't modify the code. Actually, I'm still searching in uh, name field, country field, city field. So now I want to use the full text um, field I just created. So instead of searching, for example, in country, I'm going to search in full text now. And let's say that if I my query um, hits the name field, I want that the document uh, become more relevant uh, than uh, other documents. So I'm going to boost the result if I find if I find the term in the name field, this is what I'm doing here. So let's compile this. Okay. So now if I search for Joe, okay, it's working. If I search for England, it's working as well, right? So everything is working fine here. I didn't uh, modify yet for the advanced search, so I'm still using the old name, so it doesn't work. So what I need to do for the so for here for the full text search, I need to use my sub autocomplete field, which is generated on the fly. Same for country, same for city. Okay. If I search for Joe now, it's working. England Plymouth, okay, that works. Okay, I have injected uh, only 10,000 documents and sometimes users said, 
is Elasticsearch will slow down my application if I have to inject at the same time I am uh, injecting to the database. So I'm going to, to run a, a small test in person service in the save method I'm going to disable the save in the database and I'm going to save only into Elasticsearch. Right? Compile. And instead of injecting 10,000 documents, I'm going to inject 1 million documents. Let's start. I think it's starting. Where is it? Yes. So you can see the bulk in action here. And at the same time, if I'm searching here, you can see that I have many documents coming. And if I only update, the index indexation rate is really high. So you probably won't slow down your database if you inject into Elasticsearch at the same time. So this is cool. Let's talk about aggregation. We have a very high number of documents now in Elasticsearch. And maybe we want to understand uh, what we have now. And for that, we want to compute some aggregation and build some analytics. So to that, I'm going to modify the Elasticsearch DAO implementation. And I'm going to ask for Elasticsearch to compute some aggregation when running the queries. So I'm going to add an aggregation. For that, I have a builder. So I'm going to first ask, I want you to give me the first, the, the top 10 values uh, in my country field. By country, on the field. So the first is the name of the aggregation here. And I want to compute that of, on the country field. OK. I can add a new aggregation. I can say I have a date of birth. I want to compute uh, my documents and group them by date using a date histogram, which is the name I'm going to use is by year here. This date histogram will be applied on, of on the date of birth field. And I want an interval. So I want to produce a bucket every for every year. Date, histogram, interval year. OK. I'm going to add as well a format here. I need that. Format by year. OK, that's all. I compile that. On the front end, I did something to show uh, more information when I have the result of the aggregation. So here we go. On my one million documents, I know that now that uh, I have that number of documents in Italy, that number in England, and that number um, here in, uh, uh, sorry, for this decade, and that number for this decade. If I search inside this, I can look that Joe or all the mails, or England maybe. OK, so everything is running fine. So I'm able to compute aggregation on top of my data. Right, and it's still fast. Um, what I can do now, I can start to add some filters. So imagine that I want to click on France. I want to create a new filter which will filter what I have, uh, the result set regarding to what I have entered here. So how I can do that in the person service, I'm going to modify a little my search here. And I'm going to add some filters. OK. So from the interface, I get a filter underscore country and the filter underscore date uh, information. I'm using that information. If I have anything in country and date, I'm building an filter 
And if I have something in country, I want to filter by country with that term. And if I have something in date, I want to use a range filter to, to apply a filter between two dates. And for those two dates, I'm adding 10 years for the from the first date. I hope you understand that. So what is happening now? If I remove my filter, I have all, all persons. And if I want to look at people in France, born in the 50s, here we go. And I can still look for Joe in that period. OK. We can do even better. We can compute uh, with Elasticsearch. We can do some aggregation of aggregation of aggregation. So we can build a tree of aggregation. So let's do that. Uh, remember my search here, my first aggregation by country? Actually, I can add inside this aggregation a new sub-aggregation. Sorry, sub-aggregation. And it could be a date histogram, OK? So I'm going to replace all that code with the final code. So what I'm doing here, I have my uh, documents broken by country. And for each bucket, I want to compute a date histogram by year. Here, I set an interval, which is almost 10 years. And for each bucket uh, uh, of this uh, date histogram, I want to compute the average number of children. Okay. From my interface, I need only to uncomment this to have a new button. So the page is ready. <laughs> and I need to reload my resource. OK. Cool. So if I reload this, now I have my compute button. And what does it show? It shows that for my million documents, I have all my documents broken by country. And for each country, I have the number of persons by decade. And for each decade, I have the average number of children. So if I'm searching inside this, if I'm looking for Joe, for example, here are the Joe broken by country, by year, and by children. I have everything, real time. When you inject data, it comes in real time. Near real time, you have one second delay by default. You can do it yourself. <laughs> Just read the README <laughs> at for each step, and probably you will be able to, to run it uh, by yourself. So we have seen that uh, I'm sending documents in a synchronous mode. Each time I have, uh, I need to persist my, my uh, bin to the database, I'm sending it to Elasticsearch directly. But maybe at some point we want, for example, to stop the Elasticsearch cluster to make some operation, I don't know. And what will happen in, uh, uh, at this point? We will need to look at the log file and say, oh, we had a problem, so we need to re-inject something. And we don't want to manage a re-injection by ourselves. So instead of sending in a synchronous manner uh, our documents to Elasticsearch, we can use brokers, actually. So instead of sending documents to Elasticsearch, I'm going to send my documents to a message queue. And then in my application, I can start a process which listen to the message queue and then send to Elasticsearch using the bulk we have seen before. If you don't want to build your own broker, you can use Logstash. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you can use brokers, very cool brokers like uh, uh, Redis and RabbitMQ. And if you don't want to build your own broker, you can use Logstash. So Logstash is an ETL tool, like. Uh, it's built uh, by the Elasticsearch, the company. If you come at the end of the session, I have cool stickers about Logstash. And basically what it does, it streams your data in real time to Ela into Elasticsearch, right? And with that um, architecture, you can imagine that if you need uh, to have a failover with Logstash, 
You can modify and, send and create many instances of Logstash, or you, you can scale out as well uh, RabbitMQ, for example, so you can design your architecture regarding to your needs. And that's very cool. So join us. Don't be afraid of the dark side. And seriously, I would really recommend you to start playing with Elasticsearch. Uh, give it a try for some days as a proof of concept project. Just inject your existing data. You have somewhere probably in data. Just inject your data and build some cool features on top of Elasticsearch. And for example, once uh, your data are inside Elasticsearch, you can use Kibana. Kibana is also a product uh, uh, built at Elasticsearch. It's an Angular uh, GS application run into the browser and connect to the Elasticsearch cluster. And it helps you to visualize your data in real time and build that kind of cool dashboard uh, when you need. Apache to license as well, like uh, Logstash and, uh, and Elasticsearch. I think we have four minutes left for questions. So we are hiring. We have support offers. This is our business model. And uh, if you have any question you don't want to ask now, or maybe I won't be able to answer, I don't know, <laughs> ping me on Twitter and uh, go ahead for questions. Any? Did you understand what I said? <laughs> OK. Here, you mean? Yeah, yeah actually, the, the thing I didn't uh, um, uh, do here is to read again my bins from the database. And this is something you probably have to build by yourself. And from my experience, when I was working at the French Customs, the same exact method I, I used here and I showed here to save my bins to the, to the Elasticsearch cluster, I'm using exactly the same, but First, I'm running somehow uh, sequ uh, select, select uh, star from my, da my data uh, to collect all my data from the database and then transform it to JSON using what we have uh, just saw. I'm sorry, can you repeat it more loud? Sure. You can do that with the aggregations. Actually, with the aggregation, here I just build the top 10 values of my uh, country field. And here I have only four countries. But you can ask for the, this is the group by method, actually, the aggregations. So this is what you are looking for, right? So when you implement and when you use aggregation in El Elasticsearch, you can implement a face face navigation, actually. This is what you are doing. So exactly what you have on every e-commerce website. Over, yes? To, um, to embed Elasticsearch, you can do it uh, for demo purpose. And if you don't have uh, so, so much data, uh, for example, for one million documents, you can do that. It's, uh, it, it works. All the um, documents are stored on the file system locally. Okay, so you can embed it. But m to me, the best practice is to connect to an external cluster. But you can do it. And I think we are done. Thank you for your attention.